Cow Jewelry Makers. I'm Joey Balistrieri, and I'm thrilled to show you what is on my beading mat today. As you know, if you've watched any of my previous videos, I really get a lot of inspiration from the fashion designers and what is on trend. And I like to look at what Pantone is saying will be color trends for the year. And I like to see what the fashion designers are putting on the runway models, especially when it comes to jewelry. And I love the artistry of it. So, you know, we don't have to jump on every trend that comes down the pike, as my mother used to say. But some of them can be really fun and some of them we could modify to suit our own style and, you know, life. So anyway, the project I'm working on today incorporates a few of the trends that I am seeing for 2024. And I love that because I want to stay stylish and, you know, be current with the things that I'm wearing and purchasing. So I love that. So one of the trends is flowers, but it's not a flower explosion and it's not too overdone. What I have seen is a bold flower statement ring or a brooch that is a flower, that kind of thing. And this is a very old Kate Spade flower ring that I've had for a long time. So, you know, everything comes back in style. So I put that on today to share that with you. The other thing that we are going to be seeing in 2024 are pearls. And so I decided in this project to incorporate several of the fashion trends and also something that's rather classic and maybe give it an update and a little twist. So I am making a lariat necklace and I am using these four by six millimeter glass pearls. So I chose these pearls for a couple of reasons. One thing is they are not the typical round pearl that you know we many of us have inherited from mothers and grandmothers that are knotted in between. To me, this rondelle shaped pearl is a little bit edgy and a little bit updated and uh, it just it, it looks a little bit more current and I don't know a little has a little modern vibe to it for me and the other reason that I chose these is because this necklace is going to be ridiculously long because it is a lariat a lariat and I want to have some options as far as knotting it wearing it around my neck as a lark's head knot and some things like that which I'll show you so the reason that I selected these is that these are $4 per strand and I had they had a 50% off sale at the craft store. So they came out to $2 per strand. And since I want to string the entire length of my necklace in the pearls, I needed a lot of pearls. And so an inexpensive glass pearl was my solution for this not costing a lot of money, you know, so because a, long, a 60 inch necklace or so where the entire length of the necklace is an expensive bead can be quite an expensive necklace. So I also like the size of these so that it won't be too heavy. They're a four by six millimeter and they're not terrible quality. It's craft store glass pearl. They're not terrible. So that's what I'm using. And then I also have some 11 O metallic gold seed beads, which are going to be my spacers. And then I have a selection of these glass flower beads that I found at our local bead wholesaler here in Orlando and a few check glass leaves and I made my own little jump rings from 20 gauge wire and I have been using ball head pins for the leaves. I'm also using these little crystal rondelles that were left over from a past bargain bead box. That one is stuck to me. So that's the basics of my project here. I also am using 20 gauge wire, not only for the jump rings, but I've already made one of these little drops and I'll show you where that is going to go. So I have made a bit of a start and it's a stringing project, largely a stringing project. So I have this ridiculously long piece of stringing material. Let me Pull this into the camera so I can show you what I'm working on and let me also sorry I was reaching behind me 
I am using the Econoflex medium 49 strand craft wire and this is stainless steel nylon coated and it's a gold color. So that's what I chose to string on, set that out of the way. And so this is what the pattern looks like with the pearls simply separated by one of those metallic 11 seed beads. And so I'm looking at these rondelles having that space and being able to do the bends like this because it's a lariat. So we do want some options in how we can loop it around our neck and maybe even tie a knot in it. So that's what I was looking at. But the twist on this lariat necklace, and so let me take some of these that I've strung out of the way so that I can sort of show you where I'm going, is the twist for this is that I have created these little flower drops and I used a crystal and some really fine gauge wire to create the wire wrap and I have tried them strung directly on the bead stringing wire but they were too rigid they stuck out straight like that so I created a little small jump ring for each of them and also for the leaves and just created a cha-cha pattern that's going to hang on the end of this lariat and these will move around and I even like the little sound they make as you wear them and then I'm going to use a number two bead along crimp tube and make a little loop at the end here where my bead bug is and the final drop is going to be this little component here that I created and I'll show you I only did one so that I can do one and show you exactly what I did but that's going to be the drop so this is an amazing project because you don't need a clasp and the seed beads and if you can find a good deal on glass pearls and you could even do this with the Pantone color of the year find a pretty glass bead in the peach fuzz or one of the tones or tints of it and so I am actually was just pulled these little flower beads from my stash because they are a bit lighter shade of the Pantone color of the year and I just thought it was really beautiful with the pearls and I thought this will be a really classic necklace, a classic design. The Lariat style has been around for years and years, and there's a lot of versions of it. But I thought that would be a classic, but incorporated a little bit of a modern shape of the pearl and the flower trend for 2024, and then something that's just really classic. And honestly, a Lariat necklace could even be looped around your waist as a belt when it's this long. So it is a ridiculously long piece of thread. So I sort of coiled this end and clamped it off. And I was watching a movie with my son because largely this is a stringing project. And so I've gotten my string all tangled up. But what I, what I had thought I would do is go ahead and show you, make some of these components that are going to be strung on to the other end of my necklace along with you so you can see what I did. And then I'll pause the camera, string everything up, and we'll finish it off together. So let me just push this little this little mess aside i'll pull this one end into the camera so you can see the components that we'll be building together so let's take one of the flower beads and one of these little crystal rondelles and i'm going to use some of this 24 gauge beetle on round german style i think it is medium temper it's, uh, this is typically the wire that I use, and I'm just going to take a good little length of it, five inches or so, set that aside. I want to thread this little crystal right to the middle of the wire and just get the wire sort of grabbing, wrapping around that little rondelle like that. and. I'm going to bring my pliers over to help me get it nice and snug. I need it to be really nice and tight around the crystal. Be gentle. It's a crystal, so you don't want to break it. But this really fine gauge wire is 
generally nice to work with. So I just encouraged it to form around the wire. And then both of these wires, let me straighten them out and warm them a little bit. Both of these wires are going to get strung through my flower bead. And I'm just gonna pull it down as tight as I can. So we have something that looks like that. And then I'm just going to hold on to both of these wires together. I'm not twisting them, which you could do. I'm just going to create a wire wrapped loop, just kind of controlling both of the wires around my round nose pliers and just kind of pretending that they are actually one wire. And you'll see as I start to wrap that I'm just holding on to both of them at the same time. And it just makes a nice thick wire wrapping down to that flower. It's a little bit organic, which again, I'm trying to think of contemporary, modern things. So I wanted to be a little bit outside the box with some of the elements, even though this is a really classic necklace design. And so since it is a double wire, I did kind of play with each of my other ones to make sure that I liked the way it was landing and also that both ends of that wire are tucked in and not scratching and that seems pretty good and the other thing I did on a couple of them which these it sort of disappears in between the pearls but I just put my pliers back in there to line up the two wires if they needed it so that's the little component and then I simply took a jump ring that I made using that 20 gauge wire that I'm also going to use for the drop component and I went ahead and put this on and closed it and then strung this jump ring right on here as I was creating my pattern. Let me close this and then make sure since it's getting strung right onto wire you as always you want to make sure it's closed really well. So I did five of those for I want five for each end of my lariat necklace. And so let me just pull my pattern in and show you what I came up with. Because if you're going to make this, you can adjust this. You could really make the cha-cha necklace really full. And I have considered going back and adding a couple of flowers. So I'll make a leaf with you as well. But what I decided to do is do a pearl and then my flower and then my leaf both on a jump ring and then a pearl and then a, a little spacer a little um, metallic 11o seed bead as a spacer and then another pearl and then in place of the metallic seed bead the next jump ring with the flower and then two pearls in the same pattern so i've left every other flower without a leaf and where the jump rings are, that acts as the gold spacer in between the pearls, if that makes sense. And so I have considered even adding another, I have five flowers here. I don't want it to be super heavy. And in case I want to do something unusual around my neck or my waist, I didn't want it to be too chunky here, but you could. It's a cha-cha style, um, pattern the way we would do a bracelet or even the cha-cha rings but it's just happening on this last couple of inches of the lariat necklace i think it's a beautiful exciting design and i can't wait to finish it and so you know as you wear it like just like a cha-cha bracelet or a charm bracelet these are just going to spin around and move and it will be something that you can fidget with if you're a fidgeter with your jewelry so i'm really excited to finish it so let me just show you really quickly what i did with the leaves it's quite simple i just have these little check glass leaves and i used a ball head pin and I want the ball part to be at the smaller part of the leaf and then I'm just going to create a simple loop on this end and I will also give this a jump ring so let me just bend this right where it's coming out of the leaf 
and then I am going to use my older cutters because these are stainless steel gold plated head pins and they're pretty tough and that just I covered it but it still got away from me and then I'm going to just roll that back with my round nose pliers and it really needs to be closed really well I'll just straighten it up a little bit so it is just a nice fast simple loop and then I'm going to do the exact same thing with one of these little jump rings that I made just thread that on because when I threaded my when I threaded my simple loop directly onto my stringing wire it just didn't hang right so the tiny little jump ring made the difference in the way it was hanging but you know if you're going to create your own pattern and either make it fuller or even less full you can adjust this so that's that little component so I made three leaves for each side and five flowers but there again if you want to make it fuller you could or if you want to make it a little bit less you could and as I finish stringing I may change my mind and add a couple of more flowers I'm I'm still playing with my design a lot but I am really excited because so far I'm thrilled with the way that it's turning out and so I did put this bead bug on this end and you can do the same but I would hold it over your beading mat I just wanted to see how these are dangling and I know in the camera the angle of the camera it's frustrating you probably can't see it very well but when I'm looking at it the way it dangles and the way they go around the pearls I'm quite happy with it and at, when it's finished and it's closed off I think it's going to be really beautiful but I may want to add a little bit more flowers these are not really super heavy so I might be able to add some more flowers and so also the other thing I just wanted to mention is when I went through my check glass leaves to choose what I wanted to add as my little leaf with the flowers. I wanted something that was a really neutral green. And so this olive green with the gold wash was just perfect. When I was decorating and doing model homes, oftentimes builders would give me almost nothing of a budget for a house that people were going to walk through or it would be in the parade of homes. And I had to find ways to make it really beautiful and look full and engage people even if we didn't have money for a lot of furniture or window treatments. And so one of the secrets would be to do a green countertop or have some silk trees or bushes made for rooms where we didn't have any furniture. And you know, oftentimes people don't realize that green is neutral. We always think of black, white, beige, as neutral but green is neutral too and green goes with everything and it adds so much life to a piece so if you look at what I've done so far this is still an extremely neutral piece even though I put the green and gold wash leaves in but it added the dimension and the life was just so much prettier when I added in those leaves and so I may even go back and add a couple of more but this is the gist of where I'm going and so before I pause and finish up my stringing this is going to be the drop on this in, well on each end so I just made it almost the same thing repeated the elements that I have in the rest of the lariat in this drop so I just took a piece of 20 gauge wire and I want to make a little really tight, nice, neat spiral. I want to clean that up a little bit too, which go in with the flush side, the flat side of my cutter and just remove a tiny little piece of that loop that I started and just roll it back. And then I love my bent chain nose pliers for getting my spiral done because I can hold the wire really tightly with the pliers out of my way and just push the wire around itself to make that little pinwheel and so let me just have a look I want to I want to try this is going to be the other end of the lariat so but I've hammered this and textured it so it looks a little bit different but one two three four 
one, two, three. I think I'm going to go around another half a, half a turn. And so this is my little handmade head pin. And I'm just going to bend this wire up just like a head pin would be. And so I need to just pause the camera because what I used was my ball peen hammer. I used this end to flatten both sides and then I use the ball end if you can see how this is shaped it puts like really lovely dents and for me it just looks it just looks so contemporary I'm not sure if the camera will show the texture put my hand behind it a little bit but I just think it looks contemporary to have the spiral flat and have some texture to it. So I'm gonna pause the camera so that I don't pound in your ears. I have my little bench block right here and my ball peen hammer, and I'm just going to take a moment and flatten this and add a little texture, and then I'll show you how I finished it off. It occurred to me that I always pause the camera when I am hammering and it occurred to me that some of you may not be familiar with hammering techniques and a bench block so I decided that I am going to go ahead and hammer this little spiral head pin that I'm making right on the camera to show you what I'm doing and then when I edit I will mute this so that you're not hearing the pounding but I am just holding this onto my bench block and the thing is I don't want to hammer on the stem of the wire where I'm going to be loading my beads. I really just want to concentrate on that spiral. like the very edge of this hammer to put uh, of this hammer to put I don't know why I can't say hammer today <laughs> but I just want I'm adding a little extra texture just some dents and some some hammered texture and just tighten that up I can get a hold of it and it just has a nice interesting I don't know why, but hammered, the hammered effect has a contemporary vibe for me. So I did a little bit on this one. So this is the component I'm going to duplicate. And I used another one of these crystals to go down on top of the spiral that I just created. And then these flower beads had a little bit of variation in color. so. I am um, was just looking to see about the color match and that looks pretty good and then I did this pearl and then another crystal right on top and then from there it was just a simple wire wrap and then when I do my loop and my crimp tube I can put this right on without a jump ring. Let me see, did I go? Yes, I did the loop in the same direction as the spiral. So this is just a simple wire wrapped loop. Take out my loop about the same size I did. I tend to put the wire in the same spot all the time on the round nose pliers. And I did a nice neat wrap on the drops just because they will stand alone. So I didn't do a messy wrap like I did 
with the two wires and even this is not really messy it's a kind of a controlled mess if you will I was just happy with the way it came out I liked the the little extra texture and thickness that it gave and especially the way it rested in between the pearls so being very careful not to distress my crystal just want to tuck that little tail in and so our, our two drops oops, this one our two drops for the two ends of the lariat are made so now I am going to pause the camera make the rest of my components and finish stringing this ridiculously long <laughs> necklace and when I come back I'll show you how I plan to close off the end I have been stringing for a little over an hour and I finished making all the components and they are ready to get strung on the end so I thought I would just do the last little bit here on camera I don't want you to fall asleep <laughs> watching someone string a bead pattern can be like watching grass grow but this was a pretty simple mindless pattern I was watching a movie with my son for most of it and um, I used I don't know if I told you in the outset this is what I have left of four strands of pearls so they were on sale for two dollars a strand so this necklace the this part is costing about eight dollars which for a 60 plus inch necklace I think mine is 60 can't remember if I measured out 62 or 64 but you could definitely adjust that and you don't have to make yours that long if you're doing this you can definitely make shorter lariats I just wanted a really long one because I wanted the option of different ways of looping it and tying it so I think I am going to stop there and if you I'm not going to pick this up because I have laid my flower and leaf pattern out here the way that I want to do exactly the same thing on this end of the lariat let me make sure that you can see what I'm doing little seed beads so when I added a pearl the next thing that I did is one of the flower components and remember I already put the jump rings on and then a leaf component and while I was stringing and looking at this I did opt to add in a couple more flowers so the next one the next section what I did is separated my sections with two pearls so let me pick up a pearl and a seed bead and another pearl and so that for me was just the right amount of space in between my flower sections so then my next section had no leaves it's two flowers and again I took the time to go ahead and put the jump rings on every one of my little flower and leaf drops and so this is another kind of thing in the past you know when I've made these kinds of necklaces I would go ahead and finish off one end tie it off with whatever I was going to do and then string but because this was so long and because of this cha-cha design I did not want to close off my loops because it was quite easy to add in extra flowers by opening the jump ring and just making a little bit of space since it's not tied off and putting it where I wanted because you certainly when you have this many inches of beading even a simple pattern you certainly do not want to have to unstring everything to say oh I wanted to add one more leaf in there so that is just a little tip if you're going to do this project is do not finish off either end because it will give you options for adjusting your cha-cha pattern if you feel you need to do so so that worked pretty well for me on this one and also this is another sort of design decision you can make if you're doing this is i liked having the two beads in between each but you could do three 
you know, you could do one bead if you wanted everything closer together. I sort of settled on, on this and I like it. So my next pattern, my next thing was a leaf and also make sure you go through the jump ring. I did have to unstring at, on the other end because I was just stringing away and strung through my loop and not my jump ring and then it wasn't hanging properly. And then let's see, a flower through the jump ring and then back to the pearl. And also you could, again, your own design decisions, but you could do two or three seed beads in between each pearl if you wanted to. It can certainly, the seed beads can make you not need as many beads. So if you wanted to opt for a more expensive pearl or crystal for the body of your necklace, you could think about spacing this out more with two or three seed beads in between every one and that would give you the length without so many pearls and also wouldn't be as heavy. So those are just options in the design. But you know, I sort of settled on this and I really like the way that it turned out. And also I'm pretty happy with the metallic seed bead because it's, it's because of these four by six rondelle pearls, the seed bead is quite, um, how can I say, set in, in between. So it gives that, little sparkle of color and I really really like that. So I'm on the section where I just did two flowers with no leaves and I separated these um, these flowers are really pretty and I'm actually loving the variation in the color. I don't know if the camera is picking it up but some are a bit darker, some are a bit lighter. There's even a little bit of flash in some areas I can even see my gold wire peeking through. But there were also some different sizes. So as I was doing my wire wrapping, I s tried to match a little bit the two sides since that's the way a lariat is. Both of these are going to hang in the front usually. But that brings me to something else. As I was stringing, I was just in my mind going through the different possibilities for how to tie and wear a lariat necklace and I was even thinking that if you had a backless dress or even a sweater in the winter that has a deep v-neck in the back you could tie this so that this part here even went around the front of your neck twice uh, like a pearl choker and have the cha-cha part dangling down your back and that would be so elegant and just really just really chic and beautiful so I was just as I was stringing as I said just thinking of how many options with such a long necklace and with the design on the ends could be could be created so let's see where I'm at. I'm talking and lost in my pattern. So after my last flower and leaf, pearl, pearl, spacer, pearl, and then I did one little rondelle at the very end. And so really it should be, it should be good. Let me clean up a little bit, take all the little spacer seed beads out of the way and get these little pearls so for I only found a couple of these glass pearls that were sort of misshapen and I didn't want to string them in my necklace but for the price you know for getting a huge amount of pearls for two dollars a strand I'm pretty happy with them so we made our two little drops and that's what's going to go on the end and I'm going to use my magical crimping plier and a number two beadalon crimp tube. Also what works with these are the Softlex company crimp tubes. They have that nice thick wall and they work great so both of them have always worked for me. And I just did a little sample for those of you that don't know what this tool does. It takes a crimp tube 
and turns it into a tiny gold bead. So that's what is about to happen on the ends of my lariat and that's where I'm going to hang this drop from each loop and that will finish us off. So you can even do fit three wires through these number two crimp tubes and do the magical crimper, but I tried it out with just the two and it worked great. And that's the 49 strand that does that. So I am pretty happy with my little cha-cha at the end. And so let's get, let's get a couple of these crimp tubes out and finish this necklace off. Now, before I do, I'm just going to tell you that before I started recording again, I took, since this is such a long necklace, I took it kind of coil by coil, if you will, and just examine to make sure that I didn't have any huge gaps or spaces and I am coiling it like this because it's going to we want we don't want it to be super tight we don't want huge gaps but we also don't want it to be really really tight because we if, if it's too stiff and rigid you won't be able to tie a knot in it around your neck or do a lark's head knot or loop it through. So, you know, I've kind of done this and I'm checking to make sure that there are no gaps. So on the first end, on the first crimp, that you could still correct on the other end. But, you know, take your time if you're doing a super long necklace like this. So I'm just threading that crimp tube on my wire and I'm going to feed that wire back through. And just for leverage, if you want to, you can, just cleaning up my mat a bit, for leverage, if you want to, you can, if your if you're stringing wire will go back through a couple of beads, you can do that. This magical crimper is extremely, oh, and I've already... <laughs> So if you do what I just did and you go ahead and do the crimp, you would have to go to a jump ring, but maybe I am gonna do a jump ring because then if I decide I want to change this or add it and I have extras here, so I will do a jump ring. You could also, what I started to say, you could also string this right on without a jump ring, but I think I'll go ahead and use one. So I'm just going to get my loop to be pretty small because it's the front of a lariat and so we don't want like a huge giant loop. That looks pretty good to me. And then I'm going to take my magical crimping plier and just make sure that that crimp tube is right in the center and you can kind of feel when it is and just make sure it's right in that well and make that any final adjustment that you want and then as hard as you can squeeze down and when you take this crimping plier off you should have the four corners kind of pinched and it sort of resembles a ravioli and then you want to turn it the complete opposite direction and fit that little ravioli shape that you just made right back into the well in the magical crimping pliers and make sure it's centered and when you've got it then you squeeze it down and now you just want to keep turning your pliers keeping the crimp tube in the well so unlike other crimping pliers where there's a back notch and then smaller notches as you go up to tighten that down this one has only one hole right in the middle and you are just forming that crimp tube into a bead. And so I'm pretty happy with mine, but if you are not, like if you take your pliers out, just take your time, fit it back in the well and go around some more until you don't feel any resistance. And so I absolutely love, love, love this this plier. It's amazing. I'm pretty happy with that. 
it looks great. And another trick, if you are not happy with it or if this, if when you crimp down this little gold bead is just too small for your design, you can still put a crimp cover on top of this if you need to have a little bit thicker gold ball there. So you're not stuck with that. And then we are simply going to cut away our excess wire. And I do save this because these make gorgeous earrings. So I have a little scrap bag for those. Go to the other end and let me clear away some tools and do that same thing. I wanna take my little cha-cha end. Just want to, I can feel a lot of space in between. So because it's so long, I know I'm going to be off camera. I'm way back here, but I'm just like making sure that there are no gaps just kind of running my hands along my pearls and making sure that there are no gaps. See right there, <laughs> there's a huge gap. So I just want to go a couple of inches at a time all the way down the length of this lariat. I can remove my bead stopper now. And so just make sure that there are no gaps and you know that it's not going to be rigid and tight because we want to be able to do things with this beautiful length of beads. And so now we're going to do the same thing on this side, feed on that crimp tube. And that's where I said, if you don't want to use a jump ring at this point, you could thread our final drop on. And I was going to do that, but I changed my mind. I'm going to take a couple of these little jump rings and add them on. It just does give you options. And I certainly don't wanna to have to restring this. I mean, it's not a bad stringing project, but it's a lot of beads to string. So I'm gonna leave it laying on my mat so that I keep the proper tension that I have and just do the exact same thing where I'm feeding that wire back down. And now on this end, it's a little bit more critical. I'm gonna use my pliers to help me make sure that I don't have any gaps. And also I want to compare because I want both of these loops to be as close to the same size as I can. So this one needs to be pulled a little bit smaller and just like move the beads out of the way because I, you will need a little bit of space to get the crimping tool in there. And just check and make sure I didn't pull anything out of alignment. And I do need to still pull that loop in a little bit more. Let's see, a little tiny bit more. Okay. And I'm just going to do the exact same thing on this end. Just take my time and get that and here, before you close down, if you notice any space or that anything has moved, you still have your wire, you still, you know, you still can do any final fixes that you need to, but I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna make my ravioli and turn it this way and close it down. And now I'm just going to keep going around, see how I did. Sometimes I'll take it off and fit it back in, and in the, on the other side and just make sure that it's, if, that I'm forming it into that little, you know, if you can see the little well that's in this tool. And so, yeah, it, it just does a great job. I really love it. Okay. Now we can trim this away and a little earring <laughs> wire there and I need, oh, put them out here. Put these little drops. Yeah, I try, I, the last minute I said, let me do jump rings because if I want to add in a leaf or add anything else, I can open this one up a little bit more. <laughs> my dog 
is almost always underneath the table when I'm working and she was leaning against the table leg and started to scratch her ear and she vibrated the entire table and knocked the camera off its little tripod so I will have to fix that because you would be seasick if you saw it but I have to thank her because when I paused and stopped filming and looked I did decide that I wanted to add a leaf to each of my ends of my lariat so I just took another one of the little jump rings that I made and added a leaf there and I have played with this a little bit and I will put some pictures up for you because it's so long that it's impossible to really show you how beautiful it is but it's perfect I was able to tie a beautiful knot in it and it's got just the right movement it is not rigid I mean it's just absolutely perfect i even like the weight of it and i was looking at the way my the way my little ends of my lariat my sort of a dangle paradise here but the way that they are going to hang and it's just really beautiful i'm so happy i think this is such a pretty design and i actually as i was working because i had quiet time while i was stringing this I was thinking how pretty this would be to even scale it down with even a smaller bead, like do a really long three millimeter bead and space it out like this and do even something different for the dangle part. But anyway, this is a really fun project. It's enjoyable. Put a movie on while you're stringing your beads on if you're going to do this. That's really relaxing or a podcast or an audiobook would be a great it can be really great personal quiet time and i have to say over the years making jewelry has been a great way for me to manage anxiety and stress and this is one of those projects but it would be really great for mental health <laughs> but anyway i really hope that you all were inspired by this and gave you ideas or something that you might want to make and i really appreciate you watching and if you haven't already please consider subscribing to my channel it really just tells the youtube algorithm that i'm doing well and people like what they're seeing and it supports the work here and the the content and so that would be really kind if you would consider doing that and uh, tap the little bell notification if you haven't done that so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos you'll get notifications so thanks again for watching everybody i hope you're all safe and well and having fun on your beading mats ciao jewelry makers